What's good, y'all? Sport Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 times WWE fans forced a heel turn. Now, sometimes uh, a baby face is just not getting over with the crowd, it's not getting over with the fans, people are not buying into it, and uh, sometimes an audible has to be uh, has to be made. Now, the question is, will that audible actually be made if it's up to Vince McMahon? That's neither here, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there at that point, because really we can voice our opinion all we want, but Vince is the one that decides whether that person will turn heel or not. And we all want it for a long time, Roman Reigns to turn heel. We end up getting it eventually. Um, and we've always wanted for a very long time John Cena to go back to being heel at some point. We never really got that. So we're gonna see the times where we actually did get a heel turn. We actually got it, it's very rare. That they listen <laughs> so should be a good one appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this one man when it came to each and every miscast one-time face occupying a space on this list vince paul and the rest of the folks calling the shots were given no choice but to give the people what they wanted gareth here from what culture wrestling and here are 10 times WWE fans for stay heel turn number 10 edge 2004 mm, edge's yeah. most recent attempt to turn his back on the WWE faithful was a bit of a disaster from start to finish really yeah. who in their right mind wanted to heckle a bloke that had somehow found a way to come back from it. Yeah, nah, but when they, they, they tried when he first created Judgment or did the creation of Judgment Day, he tried. It didn't really work because, well, we like you, Edge. You're, you're at that point in your career, it's hard to boo you considering how you came back. So it, it I get it, he was trying to get other people over in the stable, but it wasn't going to work. And it didn't make a rear ending neck injury after nearly a decade away from in-ring competition. Nobody that too. This wasn't the first time the rated R superstar had found himself fighting against the tide somewhat, however. Almost 20 years earlier, what was shaping up to be a promising run as WWE's next up-and-coming babyface hero soon took a turn for the worst in 2004. Not long after returning from injury that year, fans quickly realized that Edge's general hero shtick had grown a little stale. Yeah. And by the time the then Intercontinental Champion rocked up to his hometown of Toronto for SummerSlam 2004, the future world champion was actually booed out of the Air Canada Center. Yeah. Sure enough, it wasn't too long before WWE sensed that a significant changeup was needed to salvage their blonde-haired main event project. And by the time the year was out, Edge had finally begun to show flickers of the opportunistic slimeball persona that would ultimately carry him all the way to his first WWE Championship. Which Number worked. 9, Lita 2005. Now feels like as good a time as any to dive into Edge's one-time real-life and on-screen love Lita's enforced turn to the dark side too. After spending the majority of her much-loved WWE run as an underdog hero, mm -hmm. Lita soon felt the wrath of some rather pissed-off parts of the fandom on the back of former partner Matt Hardy revealing the star's real-life affair with Edge online. Yeah, once that came out, she was no longer going to be a babyface. There was nothing they... She had to turn heel. They played into the story. I mean, she slept with the homie. You know what I'm saying? Behind Matt's back. Who's going to cheer for you? When they found that out, I'm about to fucking cheer for you. No. And they played into it as you should. <laughs> Before the Team Extreme icon knew what hit her, a decent portion of the fan base took it upon themselves to rain down vicious chants of you screwed Matt, and we want Matt whenever the on-screen face popped up on WWE programming. Mm -hmm. The most notable example of which went down during an awkward back and forth with a then heel Trish Stratus in April of that year. Rather than resisting the relentless venom being unjustly hurled Lita's way though, the call was finally made to have the star align herself with the ultimate opportunist on screen. Yeah. And the pair would then go on to infamously help blur the lines between kayfabe and reality during their eventual war with Matt throughout the summer. The Number 8, feuds. Ronda Rousey 2019. Ooh. When you can confess to being a legitimate badass former UFC bantamweight champion, having a fondness for genuinely snapping limbs, and haven't exactly been shy about your feelings towards the average wrestling fan. Mm -hmm. Trying to make anyone believe in you as a plucky underdog or lovable anti-hero is always going to be a bit of a tough task. But that still couldn't stop WWE from stubbornly trying to force a heroic Ronda Rousey. And here's the thing, it worked at the beginning but then it started to i guess it started to get stale for the fans but it, at, in the beginning people were all for it all for ronda rousey and what she was doing and i was enjoying it the match she had with kurt angle at uh i forgot which wrestlemania it was she was actually pretty good it was one of the best i think it was it was like the best match of that night she was great
Rousey down fans' throats on two separate occasions during her somewhat brief time in the land of sports entertainment. The first infamous occurrence involved a noticeably flustered Ronnie struggling against the waves of booze yeah. sent her way in the lead up to WrestleMania 35, with the vast majority of the WWE faithful being more interested in cheering on the man at that yeah. point in time. And just as the company were forced to have Rousey go on a heelish rampage back in 2019, 2022 also saw the SmackDown Women's Championship challenger finally turn her back on the crowd during her fight with Liv Morgan at SummerSlam, after never quite finding her feet or connecting with fans as a fighting babyface champ on the blue yeah. brand. The lesson here? Just let Rousey bully your favourites and act as a violent, evil, end-level boss going that's forward, it. yeah? Number seven. Well, even though she's about to be out the door, but that's it. That's all they had to do. Like, once they started to see people, were, you know, we're going to change. All right, we're not going to book you as this baby face no more. And the way she was commenting to people on Twitter. Yeah, just have her be an asshole that can beat you up legitimately. The New Day 2015. After initially being unveiled as a set of annoyingly chipper preachers towards yeah. the back end of 2014, <laughs> fans about equally this. wanted nothing to do with Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods as a babyface unit. New Day rocks very quickly became New Day sucks. But instead of ignoring the fact their positive shtick wasn't quite clicking in the way Vinnie Mac initially hoped, the group soon leaned into the negative reaction yeah. and doubled down on their painfully enthusiastic ways. The addition mm -hmm. of some heelish cheating tactics to get the job done in between the ropes fully cemented the unit as a gloriously entertaining collection of baddies. And when given that little bit more freedom to commit to their goofy personalities whilst being forced to operate on the heel side of the divide, it was only a matter of time before the charismatic forces of nature became too hilarious to genuinely yeah. detest. Number 6. Seth Rollins 2019 Much like in 2023, Rollins had found himself organically getting over with the WWE Universe mm -hmm. on the back of his consistently thrilling displays in between the ropes. With his weekly eye-catching showcases and babyface fire, establishing him as a clear favourite to best the beast at WrestleMania 35. But upon finally slaying Big Brock, mm -hmm. Rollins soon saw his heroic Universal Championship run be somewhat derailed by everything from foolish couple angles, a Baron Corbin... Yeah, it just... Oh, boy. And, you know, some of the stuff he was saying on social media as well, they had to turn him heel. They had to, because no one cared at that point. I'm like, oh. Battle and a fiendish debacle. By the time the Beast Slayer had been massacred by Wyatt's demon clown at Crown Jewel, just about nobody honestly wanted to cheer on what the babyface Rollins character had become. That being a generic WWE corporate champ, who probably should have kept his Twitter activity to a minimum. Yeah. And so that inevitable fan-enforced heel turn finally went down in the wake of that year's Survivor Series, with Seth morphing into the first form of the eventual vibrant visionary persona, fans can't help Help but sing along with today. Mm -hmm. Number 5, Batista 2014. Much like Ronda Rousey fully expected to return to WWE as a full-blown heel just last year, Dave Batista also very much felt that making his long-awaited comeback to the sports entertainment world as a villain was the right way to go back in 2014. But with WWE clearly knowing best, Big Dave was told by the <laughs> Belly buttons. That's equal to he do got that <laughs> the folks in charge that fans would be simply too overjoyed to see the animal to genuinely reject him with merciless boos. And while that was true for a minute there, Batista knew from the get-go that his strength lay in pissing off the WWE crowd mm -hmm. and that his initial warm welcome would inevitably turn sour. And what do you know, that's exactly what went down in next yeah. to no time at all. With the former world champion ultimately receiving one of the most Batista. jarring reactions in WWE history upon being the unfortunate soul who wasn't named Daniel Bryan to win the mm -hmm. 2014 Royal Rumble. Vince finally listened to his MCU superstar not long after and allowed Batista to revel in the negativity. And when making his final return to the company five years later, you better believe there wasn't an ounce of babyface fire to be found Which in Which is good. He doesn't need to be one. <laughs> he doesn't need... He's done the babyface stuff for, you know, quite a, quite a while before he went off to Hollywood. So I was like, he didn't need to be a babyface. You know, if you have him come back from Hollywood, have him be a pretentious asshole. <laughs> That song is still legendary. A belly button tattoo equals tough. That's funny, bro. The heartless animal hunting down Ric Flair. Number four, Alberto Del Rio, 2013. Some folks are just made to be the bad guy. And that was most definitely the case when yeah. it came to the effortlessly arrogant Alberto Del Rio throughout the entirety of his WWE career. Despite exuding heel energy from the second he strutted through the sports entertainment door, however, the strange move was made to transform Del Rio into a babyface, who would ultimately go on to become a fighting world heavyweight champion. The only trouble was that most fans simply didn't buy the naturally cocky star as a yeah. heroic force of good from the off. And by the time Dolph Ziggler opted to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase, 
case on One their the big cash. gold belt wearer to the sound. One of the greatest cash ins of all time, by the way. Deafening cheers post Mania 29. It was evident that the Del Rio babyface experiment was reaching its failure of a conclusion. The two would go at it once again at payback a few months later, and it was here when WWE successfully executed a double switch that had been forced upon them by fans refusing to react to either Ziggles or Del Rio in the way the folks in the back had once hoped. Number 3, The mm -hmm. Rock, 1997 and 2003. The Rock's doomed blue chipper days went on yeah. to influence the decision to not introduce debuting stars like Kurt Angle as a clean-cut, all-conquering, smiling hero out of the gates. And it's not hard to see why, as there was a time there when it looked as though the Great One's WWE career was pretty much over on the back of being serenaded with countless Die Rocky Die uh -huh. and Rocky Sucks chants during his disastrous early time on the roster. But it was that widespread backlash that provided Rocky Maivia with the fuel to fire up the loudmouth ball of arrogant charisma yeah, that, that was, was The Rock great upon making his return from injury in 1997. And after said game-changing creation of the character that would become the people's champion, Dwayne Johnson also just so happened to experience a similar wave of rejection five years into his near-unmatched popularity. Fans were wise to Rocky's quest to lay the smack down on Hollywood, mm -hmm. and were only all too happy to boo him out of the company after losing to Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam 2002. But this only provided Rocky with the tools to unleash yet another inspired villain into the universe in early 2003. Hollywood. A Hollywood rock fond of running down towns with a guitar in hand was brilliantly born and it simply didn't matter what you thought once again. It no was good. It worked. <laughs> Him being, it's like I'm telling you, when the baby faces just finally, you know what I'm saying, play into the hate. It, it becomes some of the best stuff, man. Number two, Bailey 2019. This Many current WWE happen. fans will likely be holding out hope that Bailey will once again be offered the chance to change things up a little sooner rather than later. Back when the hugger first made the decision to turn her back on her Bailey buddies around the globe, said call was hugely influenced by the star herself realizing how her one time passionate following had now grown tired of her pleasant underdog persona. After yeah. experiencing some pretty rough spells trying to make the gimmick that had gone down so well in NXT work on the main roster, both Bailey and WWE clearly knew there was no option left, but to finally allow the former Raw, SmackDown, and NXT Women's and Women's Tag Team Champion the opportunity to give into her dark side in the latter stages of 2019. Great. And those who had once began to overlook Bailey as a serious threat on the main roster were soon forced to sit up and take notice of the soon-to-be role model. After witnessing the newly turned heel take an axe to both her signature ponytail and inflatable sidekicks. Number one, Randy Orton, 2004. Mm. Ah. Bailey turning heel definitely needed to happen. Uh, I think she still got something left to, you know, to show us with with her heel turn. Obviously, I, I think at some point, EO and Bailey are going to have to go at it. And obviously, EO should be the baby face in this situation. So I'm looking forward to that feud whenever it does happen. Um, so she still has some more to give us when it comes to her on her heel side before we even think about turning her baby face again. So after shockingly becoming the youngest world heavyweight champion in WWE history, oh, yeah, they did try to run with him the as support a baby being face sent for evolutions, a while. Randy Orton resulted in the company feeling they had no choice but to finally pull the trigger on the legend killer as their next main event, baby face star. But similarly to the likes of the aforementioned Alberto Del Rio, after Triple H and the gang booted the Apex Predator out of their group, the cocky as all hell Orton never quite managed to click as a likable babyface uh -huh. in his subsequent battles with his one-time mentor. A month down the road, Randy was beltless, and he would continue to struggle to infuse the cool charm and arrogance that made him a fan favorite in the first place into his newly heroed up persona. By March of the following year, Orton's drop in popularity and failure to keep fans from turning their attention to his one-time evolution teammate led to him once again listening to the voices in his head before long his view with the undertaker was fucking great man <laughs> and after ultimately being forced to pivot over the to the animal on the road to wrestlemania 21 Crazy. it would be a whopping five years before wwe even attempted to nudge randy back towards the light again you better believe he's gonna get a baby face pop when he next turns up though am i right and that oh, is our sure. list nobody at the time for sure he's whenever he does come back if he's able to come back that pop is going to be insane. And I hope they don't tell nobody about it. But if there's anything we know, Randy Orton has always been better as a heel. And what I would love, and I think what I think a lot of you guys would love and have said, Randy Orton returns. Of course, Matt Riddle is going to show him love. It's going to be a great moment. And he turns on him. He turns on him. He turns on him. That 
and you know you come up with a reason maybe matt riddle didn't check up on him more matt riddle didn't seem as as hurt when randy was out you, you took my moves you took my you know my my wave or whatever you you know, like you you want to be me but you can't be me i have to put you in your place something like that now will people boo him it depends on how how bad how rogue he gets he has to get really rogue because fans like matt riddle for the most part i think fans will still cheer randy orton i will i don't give a fuck it's fucking randy do whatever you want <laughs> but they can definitely and they should at some point you can have him return for a baby face for like literally a couple weeks just to sucker in matt riddle and then have him be what he is a goddamn snake and attack <laughs> and i think people will enjoy it so i'm all for him getting one more heel uh heel turn i, th I think that would be great so comment down below let me know man uh who else do y'all feel needs a heel turn and we're talking about right now who else do y'all feel like needs a character change they need to go to the dark side let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing channel road to 150k and i'm still the undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace